Chapter 5 The Metal Arms About forty visitors waited excitedly in Otto's big room. Harry and Peter were there. Welcome, everyone, said Otto. You are the first people ever to see fusion energy. It's safe, and we can make it again and again. It's cheap, too. Cheap electricity for everyone. Otto moved across the room towards four big metal arms. Ooh, everyone said as Otto fitted the arms onto his back. It's not possible to control the fusion reaction with my hands, so I use these metal ones. I control them with my brain, he explained. Dr Octavius, asked one of the visitors, is there a danger the arms can control you? Good question, said Otto. My brain is safe because of this microchip at the back of my head. He turned and showed them. I control the arms, he said. They don't control me. Otto walked to the back of the room. Blue lights went on, and there was Otto's fusion reactor. The metal arms moved. Small piece of tritium. There are less than twelve kilos of tritium in the world, he explained. I want to thank Harry Osborne and Oscor for giving me this tritium. Happy to pay the bills, Otto, called Harry. Otto turned to smile at his wife, Rosie. This was his big moment. He started the reaction. The tritium started to go round very fast. Suddenly it changed into a small ball of fire. It started to grow. The light was very strong. The visitors couldn't believe it. The energy of the sun was in the room in front of them. Otto used the metal arms to control the reaction. Lines of fire shot from the fireball. The arms stopped each one and pushed it back to the centre. The arms moved faster and faster, and the light became stronger and stronger. But then something happened. The reactor started to pull some of the metal things in the room into its centre. Lines of fire shot everywhere. Otto was losing control. People shouted and tried to escape. Harry's face was white. He turned towards Peter, but Peter wasn't there. Turn it off, shouted Harry. Turn it off! Wait! shouted Otto. I can control it! A big metal cupboard was flying towards Harry, but suddenly Spider-Man appeared. He caught Harry and pulled him away from danger. For a moment, Spider-Man and Harry were face to face, but Harry still hated Spider-Man. This doesn't change anything, Harry said. But Spider-Man didn't have time to talk. He ran around the walls to the reactor. He tried to pull the cables out of the wall. What are you doing? shouted Otto. I'm trying to stop the reaction, answered Spider-Man. One of Otto's metal arms hit Spider-Man. But at that moment, the big windows in the room broke into a thousand pieces. Metal and glass flew fast towards Otto and Rosie. The metal arms moved in front of Otto's body. He was safe. But Rosie fell to the floor. Rosie! shouted Otto. Then a line of fire from the reactor hit Otto in the back. He fell to the floor. Smoke came out of the microchip. Spider-Man pulled and pulled. Finally, the cables came out of the wall. The reactor stopped. The lights went out. Everything went quiet. Otto's body showed signs of life. They took him to hospital, but it was too late for Rosie. Harry stood in the street outside. His car was waiting, but he didn't get in. I've lost everything, he said. I've nothing. Except Spider-Man.
but he saved your life, said one of the Oscor men. He made me look stupid today. He'll pay for this. Harry got in his car and left. Chapter 6 Doc Ock Otto was on a big table in the hospital theatre. The doctors were ready. OK, said Dr Isaacs. We need to take off these metal arms. He moved towards the first metal arm with a knife. But then he stopped. The arm was looking at him. Then suddenly the arm hit Dr Isaacs very hard. He flew across the room and crashed through a window. Then the arms turned to the other doctors and killed them too. Otto woke up and looked around. He was in a hospital theatre. And then he saw bodies, blood and glass everywhere. No, he cried. All this was his fault. The arms were killers. And he couldn't stop them. Otto tried to stand. The arms helped him. Two of the arms became legs. They walked out of the hospital and into the road. A taxi was going to crash into them, but the arms hit the taxi and it turned over. They went down to the Hudson River. There they found an empty old building above the water. The arms had some dark plans. This was a great place to make them real. Everyone's talking about it cried Jonah Jameson in his office at the Daily Bugle. A crazy scientist with four metal arms. What do we call him? he shouted. Dr Octopus, said one of his men. Dr Octopus. Doc Oc. I love it. Betty Brandt brought Peter into the office. Where have you been? Jameson shouted. There's a crazy scientist in town and we have no pictures. You've lost your job. Boss, the planetarium party, said Betty. Oh, um, OK, Parker, I need you. There's a big party for an American hero, my son. Could you pay me now, asked Peter. Jameson laughed loudly. Then he looked at Peter again and laughed some more. <laughs> planetarium, tomorrow night. Eight o'clock. Goodbye. Down on the river, Otto was sitting all alone. My Rosie's dead, he said. My dream is dead. He looked down sadly at the water. Something is talking in my brain, he thought. He put his hand to the back of his head. The microchip was gone. Peter was right, Otto said. I couldn't control the reaction. But then the voice in his brain got louder. It was working, it said. We can build the reactor again. Yes, said Otto. We'll build again. We need money. We will take money. It's a crime not to finish our work. The arms were taking control of his brain now. The energy of the sun in my hands, cried Otto. Nothing will stand in our way. Nothing. No, said the man at the bank. We can't lend you any money. I see, said Aunt May. She smiled but she sounded tired and old. Peter took her hand. Don't worry, we'll find a way, he said. But then, oh no, he thought. His spider sense woke up. Doc Ock arrived at the bank. He was wearing a big coat and dark glasses. He wanted money too, but he wasn't going to ask for it. The long arms came out of his coat. They pulled off a big metal door at the back of the bank. They threw the door across the bank towards Peter and Aunt May. Peter ran to change his clothes. 
Don't leave me, called Aunt May. Spider-Man ran around the walls behind Doc Ock. The arms threw bags of money at him. Peter tried to shoot some webbing, but nothing happened. A bag of money hit Peter, and he fell to the floor. The metal arms lifted him up. Two metal hands pushed down on his head. Now Peter was angry. He shot webbing to the right and left. He pulled two heavy desks fast towards Ock. Doc Ock and a desk crashed through the bank window. People on the street outside cried out. At that moment, two police cars arrived. The police jumped out and pointed their guns at Ock. A metal arm moved towards a crowd of people and took a woman in its hand. It was Aunt May. She had an umbrella in her hand, and she hit Ock with it. Don't follow me, Ock shouted, and he ran up the side of a high building. The police couldn't shoot at Ock because he had Aunt May in his arms. Spider-Man was waiting near the top of the building. Give her to me, he said. At first, Ock lifted Aunt May up to Spider-Man, but then he opened his metal hand. Now Aunt May was falling fast. In a moment, Spider-Man shot webbing at Aunt May and stopped her fall. Ock hit Spider-Man, and Aunt May swung back up. She hung onto the building with her umbrella. Ock and Spider-Man fought up and down the building. Ock threw Spider-Man through a window of a building across the street. Peter shot webbing at both sides of the window. He pulled back on the webbing and fired himself across to Ock and Aunt May. Ock held Aunt May behind his back. A long knife came out of one of the arms. Suddenly, Aunt May swung her umbrella into Ock's face. His dark glasses broke and he cried out. He dropped Aunt May again but Spider-Man shot two lines of webbing down to Aunt May and quickly caught her. He swung down to the street and put her down very carefully. Aunt May wasn't in danger now, so the police started to shoot at Ock. But Ock went higher up the building and escaped over the roof. Chapter 7 Spider-Man No More Harry sat at the bar in the planetarium. You're drinking too much, Harry, said Peter. It's a party, said Harry. And don't forget, I've just lost all my money on a crazy scientist. And then there's Spider-Man. Let's not talk about him tonight, Harry. Every night, Peter, said Harry. Until I find him, I can only think about Spider-Man. Parker, shouted Jonah Jameson across the room. Parker, I'm not paying you to sit at the bar all evening. Take photos. Take more photos. Take pictures of me and my wife with the city's most important people. Just then, a woman spoke into a microphone. Good evening, everyone, she said. Tonight, the Science Library of New York welcomes a special American hero. The first man to play football on the moon. The great, the fine, the good-looking Captain John Jameson. The band played, and John Jameson came down some stairs. Peter was ready with his camera. But he couldn't take the picture. MJ was standing next to John Jameson, with her arm in his. She smiled as she looked at all the faces. But then she saw Peter. Later, Peter found MJ outside the party. Hi, he said. Oh, you, she said. Listen, I'm sorry, he said. There was trouble on the way to the theatre. She stopped him. I don't know you, she said angrily, and I can't think about you any more. It hurts too much. Can I get you a drink? I'm with John. He'll get my drink. John has seen my show five times. Harry has seen it. Aunt May has seen it. My ill mother has seen it. Even my father has seen it. But my best friend, 
Oh no, he can't get to a theatre for eight o'clock. After all these years, he's just an empty seat to me. A little later, John Jameson took the microphone. I just want you all to know, he said, the beautiful Miss Mary Jane Watson has just agreed to be my wife. MJ went up to John and kissed him. Shoot the picture, Parker, said Jonah Jameson. Shoot the picture! Peter lifted the camera and took the picture. But he could only think about MJ. Was she lost to him now? He ran outside. He changed into his Spider-Man clothes and started to swing through the city. He felt better, but not for long. Suddenly there was no more webbing. He crashed down to the street. He tried again to shoot some webbing, but nothing happened. Why is this happening to me, he asked. He tried to go up a wall, but he crashed down again. He sat there for a moment. He saw an old daily bugle next to him. His Spider-Man photo was on the front page. The story was about Spider-Man and Doc Ock at the bank. They were taking the money together. Late that night, there was a storm in the city. Peter couldn't sleep. He was thinking about Uncle Ben. He thought about Uncle Ben's words, the words he said on the day he died. With great power comes great responsibility. I can't live your dreams anymore, Uncle Ben, said Peter. I can't be Spider-Man. I want a life of my own. Peter got dressed. He took his Spider-Man clothes with him and went out. He came to a small street and threw his Spider-Man clothes away. Spider-Man no more, he thought, and he went home. Chapter 8 An Ordinary Life Peter sat in the theatre and watched MJ. He was enjoying the play so much. At one moment, MJ saw Peter. They smiled at each other, and for a few seconds she forgot her lines. After the play, they walked through Chinatown together. You were so wonderful, he said. You look different, she said. Well, I cleaned my shoes. I washed my clothes. I did my homework. I do my homework now. Do you want to get some Chinese food? Peter, I'm getting married. You once said to me, I love you. Back then, I couldn't be with you. There were things I had to do. But I don't have to do them now. You're too late, she said. Will you think about it? Think about what? You and me. There never was a you and me, Peter. You don't understand. I'm not an empty seat anymore. I'm different. I have to go. MJ got into a taxi. She looked back at Peter. You are different, she said, and closed the door. Betty Brandt took the street cleaner into Jonah Jameson's office. He was carrying something in a brown paper bag. He put the bag on Jameson's desk and took out Spider-Man's clothes. Where did you get those? shouted Robbie Robertson, Jameson's number two at the Daily Bugle. In the street, the man explained. Jameson couldn't believe his eyes. Spider-Man no more? This was front page news. I'll give you fifty dollars for them, he said. Only fifty dollars, said the street cleaner. All right, one hundred dollars. Miss Brandt, take this man away and give him his money. It was two years since Uncle Ben died. Peter sat at the table in Aunt May's home and she gave him a cup of tea. It was all my fault, Peter, she said. You wanted to go by train that day. Uncle Ben wanted to drive you, and I didn't stop him. Peter decided to tell her. Aunt May, it was my fault, said Peter. 
I didn't go to the library that day. I went somewhere else. To win some money. To buy a car. I wanted to look good for MJ. It happened so fast. I won the money, but the guy didn't pay me. Then another man took all the money. I didn't try to stop him. I let him go. He wanted a car. He tried to take Uncle Ben's. Uncle Ben said no and the man shot him. I held Uncle Ben's hand when he died. Peter was crying now and he took Aunt May's hand. I've tried to tell you so many times, he said. But Aunt May took her hand away. She had no words to speak. She looked sadly at Peter. Then she stood up and went quietly upstairs. Down by the Hudson River, Doc Ock was finishing his new fusion reactor. He stood back and looked at his work. Just one more little job, he said. All I need now is the tritium. Harry Osborne was in his father's old room. He was looking at newspaper stories about Spider-Man, and he was drinking. Suddenly there was a loud noise outside. Thump, and then another. Thump. Harry went outside. Suddenly a metal arm appeared. It pushed Harry to the ground. Hello, Harry, said Doc Ock. Otto, what do you want? Tritium, but I need more of it this time. Ock took Harry with one of the arms and held him out over the street. The street was a long way down. Stop, cried Harry. Bring me Spider-Man, alive. Then I'll give you the tritium. How do I find him? asked Ock. Peter Parker, said Harry. He takes pictures of Spider-Man for the bugle. He can tell you. Ock was already on his way. Don't hurt Peter, Harry shouted after him. But Doc Ock wasn't listening.